Stop laughing, stop it. All right, so hello to everybody. Thanks for joining me here, um, considering everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna talk about advanced permission system using the groups module. I'm assuming everybody here at some point used groups, the groups module, or at least the OG module in Drupal 7. Um, it was a very similar thing, but basically just wrapping that, I mean, having that connection between various different entities um, and doing then some stuff with it. So a couple things about me. My name's Jan. Um, I'm a full stack developer uh, at NDP. You can see all the handles where you can reach me um, if for some reason, or you could just grab me outside if needed. If you're gonna have any more questions about this, um, if anything wasn't explained as well as you might have think, just like I said, grab me outside. So I wanted to give you some. The idea here is I'm gonna give you some background. We're gonna go through some theory, and then we're gonna switch to the code base because there's, there's quite a lot of code base, and I promised some code examples, um, which I think is going to be the best way to show you how, how things are working and how things have been done. So some background first, this is this was actually done for a client of ours. Um, so we sort of had this need where there were a lot of users on the system and these users created various different pieces of content. There were some notes, there were some media files, um, and a lot of other custom entities that we also built. And now that itself is fine, but then we also had a lot of top level um, users, roles, which had different permissions based on what kind of role they have. And also, it was also depending on the group types. So we had a bunch of different group types in which the users were and into which we put these top level roles in. And then based on the permissions that we set in the groups, uh, we had to determine what kind of permission, what kind of access those users would actually have to those entities that the users created. Um, so to wrap it up, we've got, we've got the users on one hand and the users create, create all these different types of entities and then above them we've got different group types with different roles and permissions inside of the groups and we also have these top level um, users, so things like supervisors, editors, um, a bunch of them. And all of that sort of needs to work together. It needs to give you the proper permission when you need it. So here's like a, a an attempt to sort of visualize how the whole thing actually looks like. So like I said, we've got the groups in the middle, which are actually the, the main thing of the whole story that we have here. Um, and the groups connect everything from the entities that the user can create all the way up to the supervisors that can view these entities. So it's always going to be the, the entities that, that's going to be the, the thing that somebody's going to want to see or do something on it. And um, I've also shown that you could have an editor above inside of the group and then a supervisor and you could also see that one supervisor could be in two different groups um, so it's, it's like a mixture of all of these things together. So you're probably going to say that groups has all of that built in. You, and you're not wrong. Um, groups has all of this pretty much accessible for us. So you can, you can put content inside of groups. You can set different permissions. You can set different roles inside of the groups. Um, but the thing was that um, we expected quite a lot of content 
to be here. So we're talking about tens, hundreds of thousands of users, entities, things like that. What that means is groups works, I mean groups that has this built in, but you need to have the group content. So if you're familiar with groups, you've got the group entity, and then inside of that, you've got the group content entity, which is the actual entity that sort of connects these two together. So when you add, let's say a user into uh, a group that creates a group content and it references both of these things together. So the group into which you're putting that user and the user, which is actually the one you're putting the group into. Um, so why we have an issue with this is, like I said, we've got a lot of content and basically just thinking about it, it seemed a bit scary to, to have all that amount of content, that amount of entities being created in the back end. Um, not just creation of them, but seeing this as like a permission system, it means we're also going to have to query all of them. So. Eventually, we decided that we needed a more a more custom approach to it, um, just simply because the, the group content, the, the amount of those con uh, entities that might be created and that might be queried, um, just seemed a bit too scary. So we we went down this path to to create this custom built permission system. So. Um, We've got a couple of different things that we needed to think about. So first of all, first of all, um, we've got different entity types. We somehow need to put all of those entity types into groups. By default, uh, groups have, I think, nodes and users, maybe something else that you can enable, and then you can add those, those types of entities into your groups. But that's about it. We, on the other hand, had a need for a lot more of these things. Um, we also had custom entity types, so that means we also need to put those inside of the um, groups. Now, when I say put inside of the groups, it's not the way you might think. It's not like um, the group content that I was explaining about before, um, but we'll get to that. I'm going to explain exactly why I mean by that. So the, the next thing was obviously entity level access. So when somebody wants to view, edit, delete, or um, whatever to the entity, um, that sort of permission system needs to kick, kick in and say, yeah, so we've got this user which belongs in this group. It has these sort of permissions. It says that he can view that, so let's give him that. Um, the second bit was the list level access. Now, yeah, we did have, um, we always rendered entities out. So just by rendering, rendering the entities out, the entity level access sort of kicked in, which means if you didn't have access to a, to a specific entity, you didn't see it. But the problem arose when, so we used search API to list and filter all of these entities. Now, the problem was that, yes, you didn't actually see the entity that you weren't allowed to see, but also when using facets or, for example, the, um, what's it called in the, in the header, the summary of how many results do you see, that wasn't actually accurate. Because even though that, let's say, you have a hundred entities being shown to you, uh, the summary is going to say you've got a hundred entities over there but because you don't have access to some of them it's still going to say a hundred but the actual entity is just not going to get rendered so we also needed to sort of fix that and what we did is we had to basically go into the query itself so once you do the whole search once you do the whole query we needed to alter that in a way that you actually got back just the entities um, hello? that you actually got back just the entities on which you were able to see to, to do some sort of stuff on it. Then we've got the special cases. Obviously it's never gonna go um, as easy as you might think so I'm just gonna do the entity level, the list level, all of that, I'm gonna click all of that, things like that. 
and eventually somebody's gonna come in and say well for this particular case yeah we need something a bit different than than what it is um, and first thing came in first thing came in we did it into the system second thing third fourth and so on we started to see like this something that we needed to address um, so we sort of decided that we needed to have a special system just in place to handle all of these special cases and with that also enable other modules to plug into that uh, and provide their own special cases for access um, and then obviously yeah, managing all components um, this basically just means that there is a service uh, like a manager that is gonna pull all of these things together, do all of the logic in the back end, and basically just have one point of, let's say one point of contact um, into which you just need to look at or do, do things, and basically that file, that manager itself, is the one responsible for actually giving you access and sort of joining all of these components together. So, as I said, we need to allow new entities in groups. Um, there's a nice plugin provided by Groups itself. It's called the Group Content Enabler plugin. So those of you familiar with plugins, um, they're very easy to use. You basically just take the file that it is, create your own one. Um, there are some classes that you need to extend. There are some annotations that you need to add. Uh, but essentially that provides you with a nice way for which that you can use to add your own entities inside. And with that in mind, we also needed to build the system in a way that's going to be easy for other developers um, when sort of building their own entities or say that they have an entity already. Um, in the which they want to put into the whole system permission um, they needed to have like a tool or a system to easily do that um, and just make sure that they do that without any issues they do that without any problems they do that without breaking the system so that's something that was also kept in mind then on like I said the entity level access uh, we've got view of the delete actions. Um, I think some other ones got into place, so things like view own published, view own unpublished. Um, it's basically up to you to determine which ones do you want to put inside. Um, but that also meant that we had to override the existing access control handlers. So those familiar with entities, there's this big annotation um, text on top of the class and inside of which there is one particular one which is interesting for us is the access control handler so that defines the class that determines um, the access to that entity so anytime I don't know for example let's say nodes um, when you try and open up a node there is an access control handler class that's being triggered in the back um, that determines if you do have access to that node. Um, then list level access, as I said, um, the main thing what here was that the queries needed to be altered. So we didn't want that facets, the, the summary of, of all those things and the search API to provide you with wrong data. And then again, we also think there's a lot of these entities, you don't want to be putting out all of them if, don't, if it's not needed, right? Um, so you, you might have 10, you might have 100, you might have 10,000 of them. Um, if there's a way that you can do something to not put that, not put that, um, that much of a performance issue on the on the site. I mean, you should do it if you ask me. And yeah, the special cases, like I said, uh, we've seen, we got back a couple of times 
um, that there are some special cases which need to be implemented and then eventually uh, we decided that we needed the system that's going to handle all of these special cases. So wh what we did is we actually built a custom plugin manager and type. Um, I'm going to show a bit more into detail. I'm not going to go exactly into detail in the, on the whole manager, uh, I mean on the whole plugin manager and type thing. Um, just sort of like top level things as you can see. But essentially, yeah, the whole plugin system, the whole plugin API was actually very convenient for us because we could, we were able to build these types and then what that meant is we could basically just create new plugins, other modules would create these plugins and um, we would sort of just build that small bit of logic into our um, system that would sort of check all of these plugins and then determine what the access was, if there are some special cases for example. And the service manager, um, as I said, this is basically just to wrap things up, to have them all in one place. I guess it's a matter of developer to developer on what they want to do or how they want to do these things. But the way I see it, it's, it's good to have like this service manager that's going to handle you all of the things. Um, I mean, that, that it's not the same as a plugin, that it's not like a controller, things like that. You put it in a service, all of those helper methods that you might use throughout the system and, and things like that. So now I'm going to go into the whole code, the whole code base. At this point, um, we might have, I mean, we're probably going to have a lot of code to, to show. So if anybody feels that, I mean, they have a question or something that that's not exactly clear, um, you can just raise a hand and interrupt me at that point and I can give you more more detail on the whole thing. Um, how visible is this? It isn't. Is, there a light is it possible to turn off the controls? Lights. On the panel, on the panel. No. No. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we can just. I think this is probably the best, right? Is that okay, everyone? Yeah. Okay, it's good. No, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave it at this and we, at least we see what the code is. Alright, so I said that the first thing is to have all of these entities, all of these custom entities to be shown inside of the group. So why we need that? It's not because we want to actually reference the group inside of that, but um, the group content enabler also provides us with a nice way to define different permissions for that specific entity type. Um, so with that, in theory, um, I mean very shortly, what it meant is I have a custom entity, or in this case I've got file media user and web submissions. I wanted to put these entities into the groups and then <coughs> Once I did that, I was able to define different permissions for different roles. So, for example, the editor might have access to a file, whereas the supervisor might have access to a web form submission. So, once these group content enable plugins were built in, we were able to like quickly add all of these all these content types. Sorry, are you able to zoom in your code at all? Let's see. Um, Can you menu maybe? Isn't it just Does anybody know where to do that? It might be just that. Sort of Under view to the right. Plus or control plus that one. Command plus, command plus. Command plus doesn't work, I just tried it. Um, we could probably use like this.
uh, code style font it in. Font. Uh, Probably not six. <laughs> oh. It was twelve. Uh, you you can uh, use your trackpad uh, to. You can. Uh, yes, I just did it. Oh, you can. <laughs> cool. Thank you. So let's do this. It's better. Yes. All right. So as we said, this is a plugin. You're familiar with plugins. Um, the top thing, the text is the annotation, which sort of defines the whole thing. Um, it's basically just taken from whatever the group module is providing us with, um, but it has, you might see that it extends different things than what the module, the contrib module might provide us. So that is tracking back to the thing that I said that we need to provide like a better system for other developers to, to put these files in. So um, that we have like this uniform system of all the files and how all the entities are being added in. So you can see that this here, we only have two methods. So get bundle type ID and get entity type ID. I'm gonna go through the, the other classes and it's gonna make much more sense. So for example, let's go into the base one. So like so. Um, you can see that the base one actually extends the base, so that is the group content enabler base. So this is the one that is provided um, and used by the contrib module. Um, why we do this is basically just we need some sort of additional things um, in the class for that it does for us and it's just a better way to manage your code base like this so it's always going to be this one class that's going to be providing all the methods um, that your own plugins are going to be using um, looking down there's nothing specific maybe some some different permissions but other than that the the methods being used here are all the ones that the base method uh, the base class from the contrib module provides um, I think we just changed a couple of permissions maybe added things like view own published permission so this is where you can do this um, so for example you've got the Permissions, the group operations, you've got a, you've got them defined here. So if you want, I don't know, different things inside, or different permissions, you could write your own stuff in in here. And then because it's a base class, because all the other classes are going to use this, um, all the entities that you're going to add into the group are going to be using this and are going to be defining these sort of permissions. So again, like I said, just a uh, a more standardized way for other developers to add these permissions inside. And if I go back, so we've got also got the interface. And the interface, as you know, just defines like this blueprint on how one class should be defined and which method should it use. So in this case, it's basically just get bundle type ID and get into the type ID. Um, so once you have your own plugin, you need to define these. You need to return the actual names of the bundle and of the entity type. And the base class is going to do all the rest of the stuff for you. Um, I can quickly... This always resets back. So we've got the get entity type bundle, you can see it here, um, which means that any sort of class, any sort of plugin that we have has to define those methods and then all of these methods are being used in the base class to, to, to define um, your entity types. So going back, you can see that this shows up okay. Um, any sort of 
entities that we want to have are defined like this. All of them implement the interface, which means that the only thing you actually need to do is pretty much copy the file um, and define the bundle and entity types. And here the cache, set up the IDs in the annotation and you're good to go. Uh, after which you go into your um, group definition and you will be able to see this in the type inside of it. So that's, that was the first thing that we needed to have. So sort of get all of those entities inside. Now the second bit was obviously the access, the entity access. Uh, so entity level access. And with that, we also needed to override the existing node access control handlers. So like I said, what, I, what that is, is it's a class um, that each entity has and it defines these permissions. Um, it does stuff in the backend for you. Um, a couple of things that you can then define and on which the system is going to act on. So in this case, you can see that this one extended the existing node access control handler and this was the case with all of those so any sort of entity that we wanted to put inside needed to have a access control handler it always extended the existing one and then it just defined its own um, permissions so this here what you see is the very basic what you need to do so you can see we've got the access manager here uh, is applicable method for the entity and what this does is it basically just gives you a true or false if the entity is actually applicable for this sort of permissions and if it is it goes again into the ex um, access manager and it checks access you can see that it's basically very very much the same as the so here you can see the parent one um, and if for example, whatever reason it's not applicable, um, it still defaults back to the parent one, so pretty much nothing breaks. We'll go into the access manager a bit later on, but essentially this is how, how the access manager, um, the, sorry, the access control handler looks like. Uh, now, just having this is not enough we also need to override it so override the existing one on the entity and you can easily do that with the hook entity type author so again here we've got an array of all the entity types and we call the access manager and then we we call the method in the access manager which is basically written by us um, that it sort of loops over all the entities that we have and it sets a new handler class so you can see it like this um, set handler class this is the handler class that we want to override and this is our new class that I was showing you before so with this you create a cache and the new um, classes to to handle access on the entity is being used so the second bit uh, I was showing you was the list level access. So with this, we had to build another, not, not build, but use another plugin, which is a plugin that's used by Search API. So it's called a Search API processor. You might see it um, if you go into your search index and then under, I think, processors, you've got this list of checkboxes and you basically just select which one you want to have. And with this, we added a new processor into that. And basically what it just does is it sort of injects itself into the whole logic of the search API and then you can do various stuff um, with it. So I'm going to show you what exactly was there. There's a lot of code here which was pretty much just taken from the existing core one. Is this still visible in the back? 
So the main thing here is, I mean, oh, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of uh, methods here which need to be there. So to sort of define what's going on, to define on which entity this is going to go on. Um, but the main bit that I want to show you is the function called add group access. So in here, what we do, so like so, uh, here, this is basically the the main logic from here on that it starts. So the logic here is the following: um, we have a user that is trying to view a list of entities, right? So what we do is we get that user's groups. So all the groups that the user is in, that could be one, it could be five, it could be 500, it doesn't matter. Um, so on all of the entities that he is in, we then check the group content enabler plugin, which means that we know what kind of entities the the search can act on that's all based on the on the group that the user is in and then um, we also check the permissions inside of those groups so for each entity that we have defined in the group content enabler um, we've got things like view we've got things like edit up the um, and delete and based on that based on the entities um, based on the user, the groups, we define which groups are actually good to show. Now, there's one more bit that go goes in the back end, which is when doing the index, so what sort of, any sort of entity that's being indexed has this group identifier on it. So let's say a user creates um, a content and based on that user, so I'm the author of the user, it takes the group that I'm in and it takes that ID and indexes it with, together with that note. So together with all of that, so the ID of the group and then the IDs of the groups of the user that's trying to view that, we sort of combine those together and we make like an intersection on which groups are good to show. So it's essentially at the end we have so it goes like this the main bit is this line here so what it does is it injects itself into the query um, and basically just adds a list of group IDs on group IDs from the entities that it can show. So what that does is basically just, it removes all the entities that shouldn't be shown to that user. So for example, if I'm the user that wants to see, see a list of entities, um, I would just get the list of entities that I'm available to see. So the list of entities that are in my groups and that I have access to. Any questions here? Does that... Um so uh, that happens in the query itself. So yeah. So you don't pull it back from say solar and then restrict it after the. Query. No, that's uh, that's before. Yeah. So during the the build of the query, yeah. this gets injected into the query. Okay. So before yeah, so all of the data has been pull, pulled out of the index. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so we've got entity level access, we've got list level access, now we've got the special cases. So like I said, with the special cases, we build our own plugin. I don't want to go too much into the whole plugin API, because that's going to take us probably another two hours. Um, but let's see what good one would be, let's say reference supervisor. and. So again, we've got the whole annotation that we have here. Um, so these are the things that we've defined in the plugin manager. So things like which entity type ID, what are the excluded entity type IDs, what is the type, so the type is allowed or forbidden. So what we've done here is 
add the ability for other developers. Yeah. Uh, ability for other developers to sort of inject themselves into the whole logic and just define what different special cases they might have. So for example, this specific one is called reference supervisor. Um, what this is, is that the entities could have a field on, on which the user would select their own supervisor. So I would create an entity, let's say user B would be my supervisor. I add him into the entity and that itself, because of this plugin, will grant him access to that content. Now, depending on the whole structure of the annotation, it could also prevent him from a to access that entity. So you can see that type is allowed, type could also be forbidden. That's the way we defined it. Um, and with this, we, we got this nice, quick system of sort of um, providing other modules and other developers to inject themselves into the whole logic and determine what kind of access they want. I mean, if there is a special case for it. Now, the other thing I wanna show you here is, so the plugin itself, that's just one bit. Now, I wanna show you the main bit, which is the access manager. So we've got that here. All right. And so like I said, this is the manager that sort of handles all of those components that we've seen together. Um, I can show you, so for example, we've got the constant handlers. If you remember in the module file where we did the hook entity something alter, um, these are the handlers that are defined. So these are the entities which need to have a new access control handler defined. Um, so in the, in the module file, we call this, uh, we loop over these and we can see that this is the, the entity type and this is the new class that we need to have. Now I wanted to show you the whole plugin thing. So that would be this method. So we've got a method called check special cases and this method is called whenever we need to check access to a specific entity. So a user goes, tries to view the entity. Um, this is the one that fires before all of that. So, I mean, th there wouldn't be any point in having these special cases if they didn't take priority over the normal logic. Um, so very quickly going over this, We've got the special case manager, so any sort of plugin you create is gonna have a manager. And with that, uh, we use this to load up all of the special case plugins, and then we just loop over the special case plugins. Um, so these, these are the bugging things. Mm, so that would be... Yeah, so it's basically just like that. So any sort of, um, any plugin that we have has to have the check access method on which um, the logic is being done. Um, so any sort of, de any developer that does that plugin is gonna create it, it's gonna create the annotation. It also needs to create this method and inside of that method is gonna be your special case logic. Um, so with this, what you see right here is it loads up all of the special cases based on the entity. You can see it here, so it gets the entity type ID, also the type, so the type is forbidden or allowed. And it's gonna get you all of the special cases that apply for this particular case of yours. And then it's going to loop over all of them it, the manager is going to create an instance, so this basically just creates um, a working class for you of the plugin, and because of that, you can then call the check access on that plugin. Now, depending on what you wrote in that logic, it's going to return you true or false. Um, 
it also depends on the type, so if it's allowed or if it's forbidden. Um, but essentially, all those things together will define your like special case where you want to grant or disable access for a specific case. Any questions here? All clear? Yeah, probably not. Um, so that's essentially it. Um, it was a very, yeah, a very quick presentation of the whole thing because um, there's, yeah, there is a lot of moving parts, but hopefully it will just give you some sort of idea on what's behind that, maybe help you in your future projects, uh, maybe give you an idea on how you might tackle a specific case. Um, but yeah, essentially that was that was the case we had um, fun things working with, especially with the search API. But yeah, we got it to the end. Well, thank <laughs> you. Have a question. Yeah. Um, the the module that you wrote is that very specific to your custom requirements, or is that something that is generic enough to be contrib? Um. I try to build every module to be like generic enough. I would say that there are some cases that are like more specific to the project, mm -hmm. but I think with very small modifications, you could take this module and put it elsewhere. Cool, thank you. You need it. That's a handy. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Not yet. It sounds like the kind of thing that, that yeah, probably would be in a common common needs that kind of finer grained you know access. Control yeah. for all the things. Uh, but I agree, there's you know specific requirements that you kind of baked into the code there. I think based on assumptions, opinions. Yeah, I mean the, even though the the module that you've seen is actually more like a shrink down version because there are the other entity types, there are other plugins that we used, but I just wanted to minimize all of that because I mean this itself I would say was quite overwhelming as it is. Yeah. The whole thing is even more so. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's another question here. Yeah, sorry. I should say I work with Jan, and I've worked on a little bit of work on this project. And yeah. just to give people contact or some context for it, it's continuing professional development and training for um, a royal college in the medical field. And I think. Lisa Procto was saying, uh, starting from scratch, we've now got like over 200,000 entities in it, created so far. Um, Could be. Yeah, and it's, you think the code is complex, but the organization structure is just incredibly Baroque and Byzantine, and as Jan says, has tons of special cases which made all this necessary. Yeah, so I mean, like you said, the whole the complexity of the project really requires to, to think this through and to make it easy for any sort of future changes or any sort of future modifications or additions to, to the system to make it easy. I mean, we've had several cases where the client came back and said, so we've got this and this and that, we need another thing that needs to be done and because of the whole structure, because of the whole thought process um, that happened at the start, those changes were actually then very quickly and very easily done. Time's up. Yeah, I think we're up, so. Thanks.